the Honorable Paula A. Cox, JP MP. Please rise. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated now. <laughs> to the acting governor, Mr. David Arkley, Premier McKeever Bush, head of the Global Forum, Forum Secretariat, Mr. Pascal St. Amar, chair of the Global Forum, Mr. Mike Rolston, U.S. Consul General, Ms. Grace Shelton, ministers and shadow ministers and parliamentarians of the government of Bermuda, visiting ministers and delegates. Good morning and welcome to Bermuda. We are so pleased to be your host and I appreciate the tireless work that is being done by the delegates and the OECD Secretariat and we are so very privileged to be able to provide an environment which we hope you find both enabling and enjoyable as we do this very necessary work. Let me also note that you can help us in return. Please debunk the myth about the Bermuda Triangle. You have come from all corners of the globe, and I am reliably informed that not one of you has been found to have gone missing. However, perhaps at the end of this meeting, you may go missing from your home jurisdictions. If so, it is because you have taken Bermuda's tourism message to heart. You have felt the love and you want to extend your stay. Now, this 2011 OECD Global Forum meeting is pivotal. In a world that has become increasingly complex and competitive, it is important to have some constant as benchmarks. The OECD Global Forum is one such constant. It sets standards and rules of engagement. Consistency, continuity, commitment as to an agreed way forward. The important question we must ask ourselves is what type of world do we want? What kind of growth do we want? And what do we need to do? in order to provide the proper environment for increased opportunities for our people in our countries. These are the common ideals and principles as active participants in the OECD Global Forum that we must not lose sight of. The broader context for this international engagement was set out clearly in the 2011 meeting of ministers. At the 2011 OECD Ministerial Council meeting, leaders and ministers assembled under the chairmanship of the US and the vice chairmanship of Germany to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the organization. At this meeting, the ministers endorsed the framework for the, an OECD strategy for development, which outlines a broader development strategy for the organization. The goal was to achieve higher, more inclusive, sustainable growth for the widest number of countries. And this was to be accomplished by greater collaboration and knowledge sharing, including sharing policy successes and failures, and engaging in mutual learning, as well as deepening partnerships between the organization and developing countries that want to engage. I put it to you that this is exactly what we are doing at this OECD Global Forum. Knowledge sharing, both policy successes and failures, engaging in learning and deepening the partnership amongst those who wish to engage. The fact that we are here and that Bermuda is the host and a vice chair of the OECD Global Forum on transparency and exchange of information for tax purposes tells us something important about the shifting geopolitical landscape. Size does not matter. Influence is not limited to those who have large economies, extensive landmass, and significant resources. This global forum can serve as a powerful tool for democratic and inclusive change. And this is a moment of opportunity for the members of the OECD Global Forum. We must seize the opportunity and rise to the challenge. By shifting power to the right levels, we will increase democratic accountability 
and transparency and foster the environment for a level playing field. In Mexico, it was agreed that no single jurisdiction should benefit from not implementing the standard and standing aside from the global forum. A level playing field is important and that has to remain a cornerstone of our thinking. Efforts that run counter to that must be resisted. Some emphasize the importance of multilateral instruments. In February 2011, the G20 finance ministers and central bank governors encouraged jurisdictions to consider signing the Convention on Multilateral Administrative Assistance in Tax Matters. The multilateral negotiation of bilateral agreements may be particularly attractive for developing countries as it is cost effective where there is less of a developed mechanism for effective treaty negotiation and can lead to a more efficient allocation of resources since it allows for developing countries with less resources to negotiate separate agreements. However, there cannot be a one-size-fits-all model. The challenges we face are not all the same. This is part of a new approach and the ambition for all our member jurisdictions. And we recognize that we have some tough issues to dialogue over over the course of the next couple of days. And the road will not be easy. We have to rebalance our economies and ensure that growth, opportunity, and that this is shared across the board. However, we are working towards establishing a model that will operate to benefit all of us. There's been tremendous progress over the last year, and two years into the three-year mandate of the Global Forum, there has been significant progress made on many of fronts. It has certainly become a more inclusive and representative body. And this is due not just to expanded membership, but also to greater engagement with other international organizations, including the World Bank, the United Nations, and the African Tax Administration Forum. Other regional bodies, including regional development banks, are also under active consideration. The Global Forum currently comprises 101 member jurisdictions, a far cry to the 87 members when it started in 2009. Further, 20 new members, mostly from developing countries, are expected to join prior to the end of the year. This reinforces the continuing commitment of the international community as a whole to the internationally agreed standard for exchange of information upon request and the relevance and effectiveness of the work and the benefits to be derived from membership. I would certainly like to say that while the progress will be detailed by others, as the Global Forum looks forward to the final year of its first mandate, the issue of technical assistance is coming to the fore. Many jurisdictions are new to the international standard and are still in the process of updating their treaty networks or amending their legislation and administrative systems to implement it. We are also attracting many more developing country members. We acknowledge that developing countries should not be left on the sideline in the new transparent environment and recognize that the Global Forum has a responsibility to help all of its members implement the standard as a means to improve access to information and to ensure better tax compliance. We acknowledge the work of the advisory panel and what it has done in preparing the report to the G20. And we certainly support the work that the Secretariat is doing to assist countries to prepare for their reviews and to implement recommendations. These are just some of the ways in which our work creates a dynamic arena where all stakeholders both contribute and derive benefits. I certainly would like to commend the Secretariat, but also I suppose I should say that most of all, most of all, I want to commend you as member jurisdictions, the forum members for these remarkable achievements. 
allow me ever so briefly to share what Bermuda has done to implement the standard. We take our role as a responsible and trusted global citizen seriously. In endorsing the internationally agreed standard in the year 2000, Bermuda affirmed its long-standing position that it does not adopt or promote measures that have been characterized as harmful, such as legislating bank secrecy or embedding in legislation similar measures that prevent disclosure of information. Moreover, the commitment reinforces Bermuda's position in the international marketplace that it supports real businesses doing services worldwide and is not a jurisdiction whose growth is based on nor one that will tolerate the use of Bermuda to breach the civil or criminal law of any country. Drawing on our long-standing experience administering the U.S. Bermuda Tax Convention of 1986, Bermuda acted as a member of the Global Forum Working Group on Effective Exchange of Information in the development of a modern TIA. This was in 2002, and I acknowledge the efforts of the late Honorable C. Eugene Cox as the then Minister of Finance, making the policy decision to make the commitment to the OECD tax initiative in 2000, and he attended the global meetings in Paris.